Hello and welcome to another 20 Unreal Engine tips. Opposed to just a tutorial, think of this as a collection of workflows and ideas that you can use to make mind-blowing things. In my opinion, this AI image generator is the coolest thing I've ever made with Unreal Engine. So stick around till the end if you'd like to find out how I did it. And without further ado, let's begin. To pick up and move a cube, I made a line trace. I used an interface to communicate with the cube blueprint. I used a physics handle and added an input for it in my interface. I got this physics handle from my character blueprint where I was calling the event. To release the grabbed object, I first checked to see if the player had something in their hands. If this was valid, I then released the component. To snap the objects to a grid, I rounded their location to the nearest hundred. I used the same logic for the rotation. I wanted to replace the line trace with a Niagara system. I used the beam template and adjusted its settings. I thought I could use my world location and forward vector to determine the start and end of the beam, but this didn't really work. I modelled my level in Blender. I thought the cube should be placed somewhere ceremonial, so I went for a temple. In Unreal, I put myself through hell, getting halfway through one of the more complicated and outdated tutorials I've ever followed. I needed to access a custom position variable created in Houdini, so I used a scratch pad. However, I couldn't access the output parameter from my Niagara system. Looking in the comments, I found that people had been experiencing the same problem, likely due to an update since UE4. I'd been able to overcome other hurdles mentioned in the comments, but this one stumped me. Then I remembered I was working too hard. They provided the project files in the video description. I migrated the blueprints over to my project. I still follow the tutorial however, as I'd need to tweak some of the settings. I used the modeling tools to add some steps. I swapped the sprite renderer for a mesh and enabled color. I then programmed the system to activate once the cube is dropped inside. I used a spatial noise node to replicate the patchiness of grass. I then scaled by density to make the middle of each patch taller. For the trees, I filtered down my spatial noise some more. I added attribute noise to re-roll my points so that I could filter them down even further. I used the same logic but inverted it for the other trees. I then used a distance node to add some bushes. For the flowers, I set a spatial noise to cause it 2D because it looks smeary and windswept. For better optimization, I removed the grass where the flowers grew. I used splines to make a clearing. I got the class and then reprojected the spline onto my landscape before using a difference node to remove the interior. I did the same for the path. Finally, I added my landscape material. I modeled a shirt and upon placement in the basket, I activated the soap. I wanted to replicate this AI gallery using the infographic made by its creator. The process involves capturing a 360 panorama, then using AI to paint over it before reprojecting it onto its surroundings. For the reprojection, I used a light function material. Using an HDRI as the texture, I made a red, green and blue spotlight. I realized later that RGB lighting is possible in Unreal Engine 5.5, so I enabled it. Using the first person camera, I captured a 360 degree screenshot, which I then reprojected into the environment. I needed to render an ambient occlusion pass for the AI to paint over. This involved turning off lumen and creating a post-process material. The HDRI looked wrong, so I tried to backtrack, but I must have clicked the wrong button because crash. I made a new project. Generative AI has changed a lot in the past two years, so I chose stable diffusion instead of the recommended model. I used a LoRa model made for HDRIs combined with a control net to keep it consistent with the render. Hanny didn't give the best results, so I downloaded Scribble instead, which worked better. I then used a different AI tool to upscale the image. I adjusted the near fade distance to make sure that only one light was active at a time. The original AI gallery was more trippy than mine, but as people had pointed out in the comments, it was a bit disorientating. I figured out the proper way to render ambient inclusion in 5.5, which involves adding these console variables opposed to turning off lumen. I decided to use PCG to create the gallery. I added the exterior walls using a difference node to line the exterior. 
I added the interior walls at right angles to one another. This results in quite a rigid layout, so I added an incremental transform node, which I created from the set point color blueprint in my engine folder. To specify room locations, I used a blueprint with tags, which I set to remove all the points to create a second perimeter for the exterior walls to line. For the door, I created a tag which spawns on any points it intersects with. I wanted to make it interactive. For this, I needed to get the point data from within the blueprint. I tried animating the points with a timeline. I also tried using a function to spawn meshes above my PCG once it generates. In the end, I used a simplified version of the logic to set the visibility of the instanced static meshes. I used the Vares plugin and Runtime Audio Importer plugin to create my NPCs. I set up basic ChatGPT responses with the Vares plugin. I set my character profile and chat histories, then transferred the response to audio with the Runtime Audio Importer. I then linked my Eleven Labs account and trained an AI model on my voice. I bet you didn't notice. I wanted to add animations but was stuck, so I took to Discord. I asked how to stop my animation playing after the audio finished. Helpful! In the end I realized I could get the duration and plug it into a delay node. I provide shade, shelter and oxygen for all creatures. I thought I'd try using stable diffusion to create my AI character. I went with Comfy UI and chose 1 2.1 as it seemed popular. After some deliberation, I downloaded the folder, chose my stable diffusion file path and downloaded the UI manager. I generated a video of me talking, which I would sync up with the Eleven Labs AI replies. I generated a fish, some grass, and a Gaussian splat of my washing basket. I added them to my scene, along with the point cloud I used for the splat. I also used the player position to set the intensity of the point lights. As you approach the gallery, it appears in front of you. Placing the blueprints next to the NPC sets the AI's personality. Hello, how can I assist you today? Hello. What do you want now? And the number of words it can speak. What? The light function also changes to match the AI's personality, and fading the light intensity created quite a nice effect, which would work well in a horror game. Finally, the splat interacted weirdly with the Niagara system, but I still quite liked the effect. For the finale, I took yet another approach for integrating AI in my workflow. I downloaded Touch Diffusion, which lets you use stable diffusion from within Touch Designer. I used the Offworld Live plugin, which lets you integrate Touch Designer with Unreal Engine for free. I captured my viewport, then ran a diffusion model on it. I then exported that data to a render target, which I could use in a widget or as a material. The resolution of this was limited because I was using the free version. I tried to crack it, but it didn't work. I wanted to be able to change prompts in-game, so I used a switch and added a Python expression to the parameter. I needed to use a plugin to pass data from Unreal to Touch Designer. The problem was that the free ones only work the other way around. In the end, I used the OCS toolset. I created an event for after committing the text, then sent the string to Touch Designer, where I specified the actor's name. Fish are aquatic animals that have gills for breathing and fins for swimming. I tried using an event to set the denoising level, but as it was a pulse, it only set the value for a second. I used the send float function to send my character's position, which I used to set the denoising and alpha. The problem was that the string resets as the character triggers the float collision. I thought this was to do with the widget, so I reworked it, creating it at begin play and using a keyboard event to toggle its visibility. This didn't work, and I realized it couldn't be the widget as the same thing happened while using the example projects. I got in touch with the developer, who told me that it must be a bug and he would fix it in the next update. In the meantime, I made some music in Logic Pro. I went for a simple, repetitive beat so that Touch Designer could detect the kick and the snare. I then used the send float function to set the volume of the music from Unreal and used this to set the denoising. I added a point light and set its intensity with the player position. I also swapped between light functions Finally, I used another send float blueprint to set the alpha, then added the GPT responses to my widget.
What can I help you with regarding fish? Are you looking for information or suggestions? Yeah, I've got skills. Cats are cute and independent pets that require love, proper care and attention. Please provide more information so I can better assist you with anything related to cities. Hello, it's my actual voice again. I thought I'd do the conclusion myself. So I really enjoyed using the light functions. I think combining them with PCG gives really interesting possibilities to make gigantic spaces super quickly. Whether these spaces are actually any good is a different question. Inshittification is the term used to describe how online products decline in quality over time. Think how Quixel Bridge turned into Fab. And it's possible that AI has fallen victim to the same decline. Stable diffusion is quite a unique tool, but it's also uniquely confusing to learn. Every tutorial uses a different model and interface, but then doing things for free results in gigantic file sizes. Eleven Labs was fun to play around with, but because I trained the model on my own voice, it struggled to say the same words that I do. Struggled. I think I'll save my money and just try and learn to speak properly. Properly. I think the OCS toolset is a better investment, because integrating the NPCs with the AI visuals is really exciting. So is AI becoming in shitified? I don't know. But I still find the novelty of it exciting. Diving headfirst into these new technologies has been challenging. But if AI takes over the world, I'll be glad I learned how to use it. So thanks for your help. And thanks for watching. And I'll see you in the singularity. Bye. Yeah, I've got skills. Uh, well done for making it this far. If this AI stuff tickles your fancy, then subscribe because I have loads more coming out about it in the next couple of weeks. I also do more traditional tutorials, so if you fancy that, then also subscribe. If not, then fair enough. We're no longer friends, but have a wonderful day and goodbye.